Hey family, this is Kedra. Another quick video on thoughts. What are thoughts? Have you ever given a moment to trying to determine like what are what are thoughts? Where are they where do they come from? You know, is that is there just this little place in the brain? You know, if if I were to pull a brain out, if I were to pull my brain out of my head and sit it in my hands, that's kind of gross thinking. But would thoughts be just kind of floating around in that tissue? Brain is tissue, right? And we know that brain is tissue, like a kidney or anything else or heart. Is there actual thoughts floating around in that tissue? Like, are there pieces of paper that are going through like a computer da, 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 printing out thoughts? No. So where are thoughts? What are they? Thoughts are, they're, God. You know, okay, so when I pause like that, let me just say this real quickly. Let me interject. I pause or I pause and I roll my eyes or whatever that little thing does. I notice that when I look back at my videos, I'm like, they think I'm like so psycho. I'm not psycho. When that happens, it is because there does not, to my knowledge, exist a word to say what I'm trying to say. <laughs> doesn't exist. So I'm trying to bring something that is either spiritual or other realmly outside of humanity per se into being. So again, something's coming from outside, something's coming from outside from source and it's flowing through me and I and and I got it. Like I got it. I recognized it. I got the thought. It, it said do a video. I'm like, "Okay, getting up, doing a video." And I try to do the video and there is no word that I know in my vocabulary to describe what I'm trying to describe. So I am having a hard time saying it. So when I do that pause, that's what that is, okay? So just needed to throw that out there in case you've watched a few video, videos and noticed that. Um, so thoughts. Thoughts are energy. They're pieces or particles of energy. Um, if I were to try to get probably the closest word that I could get to help uh, describe what a thought is would be almost its own independent little spirit, like little mini spirits or thoughts. Okay. Stay with me. Like, I don't want to get real weird, but just stay with me. I promise it, you'll get something out of this. Um, so thoughts are like mini spirits. So then where do those little mini spirits come from? Right? Cause, cause they're just floating around. They're floating around just like little mosquitoes or something. You know, they're just floating out in the universe, in the ether. They're just going around. And through, if you haven't watched the video prior to this, which I'm not sure what I'm going to name it yet, but probably either manifestation or attracting what you want or something like that but i'll tag it in this video but it's going to be uploaded just prior to this one um but i t you know i kind of talk about selective perception and so selective perception comes into play with thoughts because we are, we notice so many thoughts are going, millions of little thoughts are just kind of floating by us every day in and out based on what we're seeing and noticing and thinking and whatever. So, see, so yeah, some of the things that we're thinking, those are th thinking, our thinking, our brain, our thinking are thoughts that our brain has attached itself to. Okay, so if thoughts are energy, you know, kind of a little energy spirit, spirits, energy, you know, I, I'm making up a word because there's not a word for what this is. Okay. But thoughts are energy. Um, when our brain attaches to that particle of energy, then we now own that thought. We have now grabbed and taken ownership of that thought. And so, and it's there, it's just in there. But we're not doing anything with it at that point. So um, if you're like me, everybody's different. I've thought and grabbed on some pretty 
bad thoughts. Like I've had some, some really beautiful thoughts. I've had some really ugly thoughts. Um, and I grabbed them. And then, but what I had to learn um, years ago was that those aren't mine. Those are just energy thoughts that I grabbed. Um, and so my brain has selected to grab that thought. Um, but just like it did, I can select to release that thought because it's not mine. I don't have to own it. Now, if I grab it and then I internalize it and make it my thought and oh, God forbid, if I take that thing and I speak it out my mouth, I have now taken ownership and internalized that thought. So now it has become part of my spirit, part of my soul, part of my energy. So we are all energy. That's all we all are. That's all we all are, right? And so um, that thought has now become part of my energy. And one of the laws of energy is, guess what? Energy attracts what? Like kinds of energy. So if the, the energy that I attract is positive, then guess what? The energy that I am, I'm sorry, not that I attract, that I am is positive. My state of being is positive. My thoughts, my desires, the, the thoughts that I grab from the universe are positive. I'm going to get more of that, more positive. If the energy that I attach to or the energy that I am is negative, okay, then I'm going to do what? Attract more negative. I'm going to attach to negative thoughts. I'm going to surround myself with negative people. Why? And there aren't really negative people. Let me just say there aren't really negative people. There are people who have attached themselves to negative energy, internalized negative energy, and are now attracting negative thoughts and taking ownership of negative thoughts. And guess what? Most powerful of all, speaking it out the mouth, negative thoughts. And so I surround myself with those people, with those thoughts and those words, and I attract more of that. Um, and what shows up in my life, because select, selective perception, the way my brain works. See, my brain doesn't have emotion. My brain is not emotion. It works like a machine. It's like a computer. So if you think about a computer, if you don't program the computer, the computer's not going to work. I don't care how much you know Excel. If you don't download the Excel program on that computer, guess what? You won't be doing Excel on that computer. It's not happening. If you don't uh, download an email account on that computer, guess what? You won't be checking email from that computer. Why? Because it doesn't have the capacity. Our brain is the same way. If we don't download positive things, it's not going to attract positive things. It can only perceive. It can see everything. It can see everything. It can see positive. Well, it can see things. So, so the brain sees, let's just say a tree. The brain sees a tree not the brain. The eyes see a tree. So physically we see a tree. The brain says, oh, that tree is huge. You know, it's just a, it's just a observation about the tree. So now we see a big tree, you know, now we see a big tree and we internalize that. And that's what we see. So that tree in our front yard, that's a big tree. Um, and guess what? If I see that and I say, Oh, I love that tree. Oh my God. I can't wait till springtime so I can sit outside under that tree and just enjoy the shade, but see the sun and watch the clouds. Like I'm all excited about that tree. But on the same note, if I see that tree and I say, Oh, that tree is too big. One storm and that tree is going to fall on my house. Now the very same tree that my eyes perceived has now become a threat. So now every time I drive up in the driveway, I'm like, oh my God, I have got to call someone about that tree. Oh my God. Then when the weather man says, oh, a storm is coming and we're going to have a lot of heavy winds and lightning, all of a sudden, guess what? 
my chest starts hurting. I'm like, oh God, make sure my insurance is paid up because that dang tree is going to fall on my house. Like all of a sudden that very tree that could be so beautiful to person A because their mind is positive is a threat and keeps person B up at night because persons B thought, their thoughts attached to that tree are negative and they create fear. The same is true about people about jobs, about stations in life, about everything that we experience. It is not the thing. It is our perception of the thing that affects how we feel about it, affects the outcome of a situation, affects the outcome of a relationship. Um, it's how we perceive it because how we perceive it affects how we react to it and what we're going to do um, and how we respond to it. And that ultimately determines the outcome. So all of this has been a, at this point, 11 minutes, we might have two or three more minutes to go, but all of this has been an attempt to say that your world begins with the thoughts that you attach to. Um, and so you want to check that. You know, if you were to think, there's a uh, one of the things in Dream Fulfill I would go over is called the results cone. The results cone, if you were to think of it like a little cone shaped like this, the very bottom part of the little V um, are your beliefs, okay? And um, I, I, beliefs are there, even though, you, you know, you could also say beliefs slash thoughts. Um, but I say beliefs because if the beliefs aren't there, you won't grab those thoughts. See, if you don't, if you don't believe that, uh, everybody with a white van is a child molester, then that thought isn't even going to occur to you. I mean, it's going to float through. It might float through the mind. And, and how does it do that? Okay. Let's, let's, let's go on that real quick, but I don't want to get away from the results cone, but it'll float through because you've heard it somewhere. Cause someone else said it or you saw it on a TV show or there's a comedian or different people. I think I heard my little niece say it or something to me. I, you know, he was in a kidnap van. I'm like, what's a kidnap van? You know, the white van, that's a kidnap van, you know, like, or whatever. So, so you might've heard it. And so you see that van, that thought that because the ears hear everything. Right. And so even though you ignored it, when you heard it, it pops back up as a thought later, but you don't recognize that you heard it before. You don't even remember where you heard it before. So that's why I'm saying thoughts are living things. They are energy. They don't go away. And so with that, we have to be careful who we converse with and what they're saying. Because if they are speaking into existence, when you speak, you are taking something that does not exist. You're taking something, and I'm passionate about this. You're taking something that is this raw, floating ass mosquito energy, which is a thought. It's just floating out in the universe. When you believe it and you grab it, okay, and you bring it in and you speak it out your mouth, you have now brought that into reality in your life. And not just in your life, you brought that little energy into reality to everybody listening. That's a dangerous thing. And it's a big responsibility that we have around our children. Now you're talking to grown people, you know what? And, and, and I'm gonna be honest, a lot of grown people don't realize it either. You know, they don't, they don't. And so later you spoke something over them, they don't even know. So later it comes up and they're doing it and thinking it and it's in their life and they think and they came up with that, but they didn't. You spoke that over them a while back, a while back. They don't remember because thoughts are energy. So you speak it, it goes into all the hearing, anybody's ear that's around to hear that. And it's there. And guess what? When something triggers that little thing, it'll float up as a thought in their mind. And they think it's their thought, but it's not. It's some stuff you injected. With that being said, be careful what you let people inject into your spirit. And if you notice negative thoughts, Call it out. Oh my God. I, I did not learn that till well into my forties, but call it out. It's not enough to walk away and say, oh, I'm not going to deal with them anymore because they have released that poison into your system. Stop it. You have to stop that thought. You have to say, I reject that. I don't believe that. 
I'm sorry. You can say, hey, I don't, I, you know what? I can't deal with the negativity. Can you come from a positive? I can hear you if you can say that in a positive way. Because you can say everything. You have a choice. You can say it in a positive way or a negative way. So that's a choice. So when you're around someone who's making that choice, then you have the option to choose differently without being rude, without being judgmental. It's just something that doesn't align with your spirit if you're trying to be positive. And so you just remove from that or you reject that and not in a negative way, but just like, oh, I don't agree with that. I don't reject that. I don't, I don't accept that because when you do that, you're rejecting that thought. So guess what happens with that energy? A thought is energy. So you attract like energy. You repel energy that's not like yours. When you reject that thought, that thought's gone. So even if it tried energy wise to float up in the whatever, your soul, your source is going to recognize that as a rejected thought. So in that moment, it's going to say, oh, that's how so-and-so thinks. Like it won't even attach that to you. It's so powerful, man. If people could get this, oh, I just want people to get it so bad. It's so powerful because your soul will not internalize that thing. It'll recognize that as a foreign thought and it will reject it. Okay, so back to the results cone. 